it's my first time using a Prezi in this platform and uh, of course I've gone and mucked it up, but that's okay, we're on track now. So I'm gonna start again um, and hopefully uh, we won't have any more technical issues. Thank you so much for your patience. So um, presenting, first of all, we're gonna have Anna from Deakin University. Then we're going to have uh, Marisa from uh, Victoria University followed by Claire, who's going to be presenting from James Cook University. And finally, uh, Tess and Hannah will be presenting again from uh, Victoria University of Wellington. So even though we've only got um, a couple of institutions represented in the webinar today, there are actually quite a number of universities that are running Green Impact this year. So from our beginnings just in a couple of years ago, we have over 14 institutions participating across Australia and New Zealand in Green Impact. So what I'm really hoping to do is in the future be able to feature the work of um, teams across all of these institutions. And if you are a team in one of these universities and would like to share what you're doing with the rest of the network, then please do let us know. You can get in touch with your institutional leads who are helping run the program at your university uh, and they will be able to pass that on to me when we're setting up the next of these webinars. So please do share the fantastic work you're doing as part of this program. Um, it really is inspirational to see what creative ways people come up with to, to tackle um, sustainability issues within their, within their work environments. Um, and of course, you are a part of a much bigger network of organisations participating in this program. Over the 10 years that Green Impact has been around, over 500 organisations have taken part. So uh, all of those small things that you do in your team really do come together to form a really big impact across the whole globe within this program. But enough about me. I am going to pass over to Anna, who's going to give you a little bit of an overview of what she's been doing as part of Team Lean at Deakin University. Anna, do you want to unmute yourself? And All right. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Anna and I work as a user experience specialist for the Deakin Library. Um, our team is the Library Environmental Action Ninjas. Our acronym is Ninjas, and we collectively came up with the name by using the mind map method to pull keywords together associated with library and sustainability. Um, I'll just do a quick shout out to um, our team. We have 11 wonderful and passionate ninjas. Um, we have Joe, who is our team leader. Um, Jane Miller, Michelle Watson, April Coulter, Adam Hornsey, Adam Straub, Michael Horn, Sarah Fenley, Eddie Pavuna and Sergey Maximov and myself. Um, and we are part of the Deakin Waterfront Library. Um, so today's, I've got a fun and interesting fact for everyone and I do like this one and this one is, um, did you know crocodiles swallow stones to sink? Um, so going on to our first, of, to our initiative, um, our creative solution, I'll be talking about B017 slash tell everyone about the waste disposal list. Um, so in the first team meeting we had, um, we identified that a, a lot of us had a different understanding to what is recyclable and what is not recyclable. Um, so here we wanted to identify a solution to create some clarity on what is recyclable and what goes in the waste. Um, and this was uh, to promote the waste disposal list, um, which is a great resource which answers to, if not all, misconceptions about what goes in what bin. Um, so how do we do this? Uh, we wanted to promote the, dis the waste disposal list. And we wanted it to, to be, we wanted it to be a solution that had the greatest audience reach, which will then also uh, gain the highest impact. Sending out an email to work colleagues could re could result in their email being ignored, and also once people read it once can be easily forgotten. So I knew it had to be a printed poster that people can read and refer to every day. So to design a solution, I followed the double diamond method. The first step is the discover phase. In this phase, um, I had to emphasize with my target audience, which was my work colleagues. So to understand their behaviors and misconceptions around recycling. So to do this, I went through the waste and recycle bins myself in the kitchen. Straight away, I realized the items were in the wrong bins. We needed it. So here I knew that we could put two detailed posters on what is recyclable and what is waste, which answers people's misconceptions about what goes in what bin. 
So the second step is the defining stage. So here I did um, to create a behavioural change, I knew it needed to have relatable reasons as to why we need to put these confused items in the right bin. So my tactic was now to change it from just a normal simple poster to an infographic which identifies what is recyclable and what is waste and why we should follow these rules and put the right things in the right bin. Um, then we've got the third stage, which is the develop stage. So I'll quickly just run through these two posters here. So the why section is placed at the top of the poster, which each, each poster has impactful facts around and what people can relate to. And each fact explains why you should recycle certain items and what the good impact it has on the environment. For example, the recycling um, poster. One plastic bottle saves enough energy to power a computer for 20 minutes. And whereas the waste poster, wasting um, a coffee cup. So one billion coffee cups are used in Australia every year. That's 50,000 cups binned every half hour. This is enough to circumnavigate the world two and a half times. Um, so hopefully this would create a light bulb moment and encourage people to use um, reusable coffee cups instead. Um, so then we go down to the what section. Like I said earlier, I went through the recycle and waste bins to see what items were placed in the wrong bins. I knew placing these items on the poster will then answer these misconceptions and help people to make the right decision. Um, and then so we can promote the waste disposal website. That's what the QR code is. So for the people who want to learn more about what goes in what bin, they can just scan that with their phone and it will take them directly to the waste disposal list. Um, and the overall design of the posters. Um, the, the recycle poster shows more of a healthy environment that's clean and bright, and the waste poster shows a more unhealthy environment, a bit more dark and gloomy. So both designs are a subtle way of showing the impact if you do or don't waste or recycle properly. Um, so you can go on to the next slide. Yeah, all right. So. It did receive, so the posters have been up for a while now, um, and they did have some um, positive feedback, but we noticed that there were still a few things that were, that was, that was still being put in the wrong bin. Um, an example of this is like used paper towel, um, that, keep, that we keep finding that in the recycle bin. So we got all together again in one of our team meetings, um, and we, looked into other ways that we could try and promote different things within our work environment. So we decided to jump to a silver initiative here, which is S010, um, initiate a communication uh, with your area or student group about Deakin's commitment to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So here we decided to do a did you know board in the staff room and this board will be a communication and education space where people are encouraged to read fun and interesting facts. Um, the first did you know poster is around the paper towel. So we felt creating um, a page which explains why used paper towel should be put in the waste bin um, and not in the recycle to show the actual recycling process and how used paper can, towel can actually can, can contaminate the entire batch of paper. Um, the next posters that will go up on the, the board will be around um, rinsing and recycling, um, around receipts, and the other one we have is around bottled lids. Um, and you can go to the next slide. Um, and here, this is just something that we've done um, in addition to the, um, um, the impact task lists. And this one here is a data visualisation to show how many trees the library has saved by offering e-resources over print. Um, we just sort of wanted to show um, the green impact that the library has had over its time. So this here shows you how many, so first of all, I looked at how many kilograms of paper per, is per tree and then how many electronic um, resources we have within the library ourselves and to display that over a 10 year period. So in 2008, there was about 3000 trees. So, um, and then by 2018, it's around 20,000 trees. Um, and some future things we have on for our team, uh, we'll be also possibly looking at around the comparison of 
um, emissions used to download a resource and making another sort of data visualization for that as well. Um, and we've got all of this will be promoted on our Twitter account. So you're more than happy to follow us. Our handle is at Jean, oh, Langers one And that's me. Amazing. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> Thanks so much for sharing. Really love seeing what you're doing and the graphics that you're creating there. Um, I'd be keen to hear a little bit further on once they've been up for a while longer to see um, what kind of impact they've actually had as a result of being placed. So um, hopefully we can check back in with you again. Definitely. Excellent. Okay. So now we are going to jump straight into our next presentation. Um, I should uh, also have uh, noted that we will have time for Q&A for all of our presenters at the end of the session. Um, so if you have any questions as we're going along, um, please do remember them, type them into the, uh, the question bar because I can uh, then prompt at the end, but otherwise uh, don't forget to ask your questions at the end of the session. So now we're going to go on to the Team Library Green Zone um, from... Victoria University of Wellington. So uh, can I just check in with um, Marisa? Can you please remind me how I pronounce your name? <laughs> <laughs> you, you pronounced it perfectly. Thank you so much. Excellent. <laughs> So, uh, hi everyone, I'm, I'm Marisa from Victoria University of Wellington. Uh, I'm a team leader subject librarians here in the library and I'm also a member of the team library green zone. Now in the library, in the physical library space, we have two zones. So we have the, the green zone where people can do group work and discussion and the blue zone, which is, which is for more quiet study. So we very quickly decided to call ourselves um, the library green zone team. We have a team of about eight people here. Um, we have a total staff of something around 110, 120 people. So, so we're a small but a very enthusiastic team. Um, we're a very, I guess you'd say we're a self-managing team. I'm, I'm officially the coordinator for our team, but it, the reality is that we, everybody plays a part in, in keeping things running. So the approach we decided to take very early on was to allocate um, a section of actions to every member of the team. So, so we all have a particular section that we take the leadership on. And mine is um, biodiversity and community. But what I really want to talk to you about today is, is one initiative in particular that we did under the health and wellbeing topic, which is led by Amy Lowe. And as they say, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. And we've found that the way, the way to a, a librarian's heart to get them to support this initiative is, is through their stomach as well by focusing on food. So Amy came up with this great idea. We had the FIFA Women's World Cup coming up on Friday the 7th of June and we had a task under health and well-being which was that staff are encouraged to bring and share healthy food and at least twice a year the team have a bring and share healthy lunch. So Amy said how about we have a, a lunch for all of the staff in the library based around the World Cup. So what we did was we put all of the names of the countries that are participating in the World Cup into a hat and everyone pulled a, a country out of the hat and then the task was to, to bring along some food to contribute to a shared healthy lunch on Friday the 7th of June that was a, a dish from a country that, that you had pulled out of the hat. So for example, I pulled out Jamaica, so I brought along a Caribbean couscous salad. Um, we had other people who, who brought along crepes. Um, the asparagus rolls, um, being a New Zealand favorite, were very popular. We had paella from Spain. We had sushi. Um, and all kinds of delicious things. And as you can see in these photos, um, a lot of staff turned up and were, and were very keen to um, take advantage of this, I guess. We, we obviously had a lot of people who were providing food, but 
because we wanted to get everyone involved, with staff on the day were saying, oh, you know, I haven't brought any food, but can I come along? And we'd say, sure, come along. So we had a really, um, a large group of staff who, who, who came along and enjoyed the lunch. And then what we did was, and this is one of the really neat lessons we've learned from this, is that never be afraid to ask for money. So we asked the library to um, donate some money towards purchasing some plants as prizes in line with the green theme. And so we offered prizes for the best tasting dish, the most healthy dish, uh, the most creative and the most authentic. And those people you can see on the photo on the left hand side are the people who, who won the prizes with their plants. And then afterwards, we put a blog post up on the library blog site, um, letting everyone know what we had done. So I think with our initiatives, we've also really tried to um, get the whole library involved and, and come up with initiatives that are, are really visible so everybody knows what's going on. So on that light, uh, we've got another initiative coming up this Friday, which is under the biodiversity and community theme. And the task was to organize a film showing focusing on a social justice or sustainability, sustainability issue. And my first thought was, oh, that just sounds too hard. And then I thought, well, really, is it that is it that hard? So I asked our Green Impact Coordinator here, Andrea Marsden, for some suggestions of movies we could show. And she sent me through a little list. And one of the movies that was on that list is a documentary called Minimalism, a documentary about the important things. And what the documentary does is it interviews a number of minimalists from all walks of life. So entrepreneurs, families, architects, artists, journalists, journalists scientists, etc., who are all striving to live a meaningful life uh, by using less. So I thought that that sounds fantastic. So we had a we've got a um, a member on our green and impact team who is part of the library resources and acquisitions team. So she managed to talk nicely to the acquisitions manager and convince her to purchase a copy of the online documentary so we could have the screening. And then we thought, well, what better way to get people along to a screening, but again, food theme, offer them some food. So um, after we purchased, after the library purchased our plants as our prizes for our lunch, I um, went to our business services manager and said, you know, could we have some money for some popcorn and soft drinks? And she eventually said to me, look, I'll give you a budget. So she's given us a, a small budget until the end of the year for us to spend however we like on green impact initiatives. So we're gonna provide some popcorn and soft drink this Friday afternoon at 4.30. Um, a lot of the library staff will be coming along to see the documentary. So just again, getting everyone together, um, making it fun, making it commun a community thing. And as I said, not, not being afraid to ask for support from the wider library, because I think um, climate change in particular is one of those topics that is on everyone's mind at the moment. And we've found that um, people are, are very quick to support anything which is seen as helping to contribute to mitigating um, the effects of climate change. So I think that's about all I have to say. Thank Amazing, you. thank you so much. Um, it's really fantastic to hear that you've been able to get a budget for running your programs in Green Impact, so well done. And again, I'd love to check in and see how you go after your film screening and um, see what kind of engagement you get from that. So really well yeah. done. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Um, so we will move on straight on to our next team, which is one that I'm really excited to hear about myself because I would love to see this implemented in as many places as possible. Um, so Claire from James Cook University is going to be talking to us about what their team has been getting up to as Team Green Thumbs. Claire, did you want to unmute and say hello? Absolutely. G'day, my name's Claire. I'm from James Cook University up here in North Queensland, and I work in a small team with myself, Ailey and Samira. 
And like many of you, we sat down at the beginning and thought, what can we do to motivate people? What really connects with people and gets them interested? And the two things that we came up with were food and animals. So that's led us to a range of different initiatives, including our Ugly Jam and our Insect Hotels. So I'll talk about the Ugly Jam first. When doing a bin audit, I found that a lot of our students threw out fruit. Now, this fruit was either things that they had brought from home or things provided by the centre. And when questioned, the students would say that it had a mark on it, it was you know, a bit old, it wasn't what they felt like eating. And a large volume of this food that was still in very good condition was being wasted. So we started collecting that fruit. So whenever the students went to throw fruit out, we'd ask them to stop and put it in a box instead. We gathered up all of this fruit and we would take it home, wash it, slice it, put it in a bag and freeze it. We continued to do this for some weeks until this weekend we had enough to make our first batch of jam. So we put all of that in a nice big pot, boiled it up and added some sugar. And we now have our ugly jam, which we are giving back to the students. So we're trying to turn food waste into food want. Each jar of jam comes with an explanation of what it is, where it comes from, and why it's so important that we think carefully about what we throw away and why we're throwing it away. And the great thing is, is that we're seeing our students be a little bit more thoughtful, a little bit more careful, and at the very least, if they don't want the fruit, rather than throwing it straight in the bin and seeing it go to waste, they put it in the jam box, which will then get collected at the end of each day. So we're really excited about that. And we've got a nice big um, shelf of orange and ginger jam. Uh, our other project that we're working on is the insect hotels. Now, on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see a little um, house that we have built. Now, we found that within our garden, we were having a lot of problems. We have a tiny little veg patch behind um, our office and we were not getting many pollinators visiting. We were overrun by pests. And so we thought, what can we do to try and restore the balance to get more of the good bugs in to help our veggie patch? And we discovered that you can make hotels, so houses and homes for good insects. So for this particular one, you can see on the top right, it has bamboo rods that are hollow. They make really nice nesting homes for solitary bees. So we've got lots of beautiful native bees in Townsville. We get some gorgeous blue banded bees and they come and they use those little pipes as nesting places where they lay their eggs. To the right, uh, sorry, to the left and down the bottom, you'll see we have some cardboard up top and then a mix of bark down the bottom. We've actually had a huge amount of success using this as a breeding place for ladybugs. And the ladybugs in turn have been helping to take care of our aphid problem. We had a huge aphid problem that was um, really hampering our plants. And now, thanks to them, we don't have to use any sprays. We don't have to keep coming out and wiping the aphids away. We've been able to get the garden back into a really nice balance. And these are super easy to make. Uh, online, you can find a whole different pile of resources uh, with different um, recipes, I suppose you can say. So you have a look and you think, what insects do you need in your area? And you put in the different housing according to what they need. Down the bottom left, you can actually see a bee house. We were incredibly lucky. We were able to get funding for a native beehive. Native bees are ideal for universities and workplaces because they do not sting. So we've been able to set them up. The styrofoam box on the outside can be removed to show a viewing panel. And so our students have been looking at the bees and learning about the bees and working together. We've been building a second hive so that in October we can split the existing hive and make a new hive. And progressively we're hoping to spread these bees throughout the university. So between the hives that we'll continue to split and these lovely insect hotels that we're scattering about the university. And as our students have said, they look a bit like strange fairy houses. We're hoping that we can reintroduce some of those precious pollinators and get everything back into balance. Absolutely amazing. I really love what you've done here. Um, the Ugly Jam in particular is just 
Fantastic. Um, I, I'm curious. I, I won't ask any questions now. I'll save my questions for the end because I certainly have some around um, both the insect hotels and the jam. So well done and thank you so much for sharing. No, thank you. Awesome. Okay, so uh, we're going to move through to our final presentation or sorry, showcase for today, which is another team from Victoria University of Wellington. So we'll just jump through now. So we've got two uh, presenters that will be um, talking to us on behalf of team Victoria Am Am Amazonica. <laughs> you can tell me if I've pronounced that wrong. Um, so we've got Tess and Hannah. Would you like to um, get started on your presentation? Yes, of course. Hi, folks. My name is Hannah Jones. I'm here with my teammate Tess Tuxper, <laughs> and we are going to present on Victoria Amazonica, which you pronounce perfectly. And Amazonica is named after the world's largest water lily. So that's our inspiration for our team name. So we both work up here on the ninth floor in our building in the research development office. And we're both administrators for the research development and contracts team. Um, but we really work on a floor that has about 60 people um, also up here. So we have about 10 team members on our team and it's a greater office that we support of about 60 people to really get on board with this green initiative. So we want to make it not just about our team, but the whole floor that we work with. Um, so we are going to be focusing on two broader issues, which we have needed to be creative about, and those are disseminating information and encouraging team participation. And Tess is going to do talk a little bit about the dissemination of information. Hi, so um, if we could just start with the first slide, and I'm glad they're numbered because I did do them in the wrong order, so mm -hmm. that's fine, we can click back and forth. Um, so our first issue that we sort of hit when we started was that it seemed like a lot of informing and spreading out um, information amongst the team um, and like lots of emails we already send those every day um, and I find that people just don't necessarily engage with them as much um, so what we did was to get a couple of the tasks underway was to have my sister create these posters um, and the first one is the green campaign, and that just has a couple of things. Um, encouraging people just to take the stairs and to join the fruit and veggie co-op. And we've found that it's it's a great way if we put them in shared spaces like the kitchen and in the hallways and stuff, just to get people um, to read the information rather than just sending out a bulk, lots of emails. Um, and the other one was the Be Waterwise poster. Um, and that one we've actually just put up recently um, and it's also we have showers and bathrooms and stuff on the floor so we're just looking to make sure everyone's you know um, letting us know about any leaks and stuff like that so we can make sure we keep an eye on everything um, yeah so if we can move to the third slide if that's cool um, and this one is just about how we have been, it's like we made those posters when my sister made them, but we've also been using a lot of free resources because um, our main focus at the moment is just trying to get everybody involved and make sure everyone knows what we're doing. Um, and I found that the resources online from like various organizations, um, you know, they're freely available and they'll send you stickers and campaign material at no cost yet. Um, so it's a great way to put things up in the staff room where people are eating and just try and get as much information as possible, again, avoiding um, bulk emails. So um, this is an example of some of the ones we've been using over the past three months. We've kind of only just started our journey into the green impact, um, but we've got the switch off campaign, um, which are just some stickers that we've been putting all over the lights in the bathrooms and in the uh, common areas, just making sure that people are switching off the lights when they exit. Um, we've got the pink shirt day, which was a really fun initiative that we had. Everyone wore their pink shirts and it was an anti-bullying campaign. Um, and then we've also got the smoke free and the mental health awareness ones. Um, mental health awareness hasn't come up yet, but we're looking forward to doing a team lunch or something for that one. Um, so yeah, so if we can move back to the second slide, Hannah's just going to talk about how we've been encouraging team participation. Yeah. So you can see Tess took a sweet little picture of our group <laughs> in the pink shirt in the upper left corner. So that was our um, the anti-bullying campaign day and we all wore 
pink shirts and really just, you know, took time to talk about what that means in our office and also working in the, in the greater university as well. Um, so something that's really, uh, we've really enjoyed doing is, you know, Tess has been a great leader for us in launching this campaign on the, for our team and the greater office floor. But it's also about people taking personal responsibility for their role in the Green Initiative and doing things um, to show leadership themselves. So we've just created uh, like a spreadsheet that we have on a shared uh, drive. And we're asking people to take ownership and choose different initiatives that they're interested in. So for example, we have one of our um, teammates, Marie Consoldi. She's uh, organizing some lunch bunches um, for the group. And then we have another team member who is working on just really outlining any extra stationary items that we have and how to consolidate that, uh, those resources so people aren't continuing to repurchase them over and over again, um, but really work to share instead of having to, you know, make new purchases and products being wasted. Another really great thing that you can see are our plant initiative that we've had in the office. Um, Tess led that and a lot of our team members and even people who aren't on the green initiative team that are part of the greater floor have really taken, um, taken it up to put plants around their desks to uh, just create that healthier, clean air for the office. So the next step, you know, we've talked about our teammates taking on the initiatives themselves and being more involved um, in, in having that ownership, which is spreading out to impact the floor, the entire office floor that I uh, referenced earlier, where we're in a big open office with 60 other people. Um, so we have a, the Green Impact Initiative as a standing item on our entire office meetings. Um, so we bring it up at our monthly meetings just to keep people informed and let them know that just because you're not part of the team doesn't mean you can't be a part of all these other initiatives. Um, we invite our entire office to the different events that we are hosting encouraging people to attend workshops or lectures that are relevant to the green initiative um, and for example we have uh, the pi 10 health and well-being is an information on manual handling and back care and also the initiative pi 32 travel uh, we're encouraging safe walking routes and also um, people to do walking meetings uh, just to really get out and about and take care of themselves um, and our last one that we have working on are people who aren't in the group have started, like I referenced earlier, are starting to get their plans and using the recycling areas. And the final area that we've really worked on that Tess has done a good job in this picture of is down in the bottom uh, left is our sustainability corner, where we're just encouraging people to use scrap paper, collecting batteries, and reusing envelopes to, you know, really reduce the repetitive purchasing that can happen in our office setting. Yeah, so that's pretty much where we're at at the moment in terms of starting our journey. We're super inspired by all the people who have already gone and it's definitely once we get people on board and stuff, we'll absolutely look at some more creative options. Um, but I think at the moment, yeah, we're, we're really getting people into it and it's quite exciting to see where else it could go. Um, so yeah, I think that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you both so much for sharing. Uh, it sounds like you've got a really comprehensive approach to tackling the actions within your Green Impact team. So well done. And I hope it goes well as you finish up the program for the remainder of the year. So um, that does take us to the end of our um, showcase presentations today. So we've got some really diverse um uh, diverse and interesting concepts that the teams have been using to tackle uh, the actions within their respective toolkits. So uh, definitely some recurring themes in there that I picked up on. Food is a fantastic motivator. So if you're able to incorporate that uh, into any of your activities, I think that's always a win. And I definitely back that up in my experience as well. Um, what I do want to do uh, is just open it up to a bit of a Q&A session for the remainder of the time that we have. So just a reminder, these are our um, panelists on the session today. So if there was anything that they presented that you'd like to know a little bit more information on or get some clarification on, please do let me know. You can either type a question directly into the question bar within the go to control panel, or if you'd like to ask a question directly, I can unmute your microphone. Uh, and you just need to raise your hand uh, by clicking on the little hand icon next to your name. So um, 
I'm just going to read out the first question, which I think is probably directed um, to Anna and maybe um, Tess and, and Hannah might want to jump in on this one, which is that, uh, so this question comes from TJ who asked uh, that a few of you were talking about uh, raising awareness of issues through creating posters. So they were interested to know if you've been able to determine if this is having an impact yet. Anna or um, did you want to jump in on that one? Yeah, um, so for us, it, it received a lot of positive feedback. Um, and because I guess they're there above the bin, so they kind of people can relate to it and can kind of use it as a, a way to know what goes where. Um, but like I had said, we just by looking at and re-meeting as a team, we noticed that paper towel had been still placed in the recycle bin, even though it had been used. Um, and that kind of is what sort of stemmed the idea of doing more of a, a detailed explanation of why certain things need to be put in certain ways and more in a sort of an educational sort of space. Um, but other than that, I've noticed though that that's probably one of the only really mis, um, misconceived items. Um, everything else seems to be placed in the, the recycle bin and the waste bin appropriately. Does that answer? Yeah, I um, I I think so. Uh, TJ, if you want to, um, oh, he said thank you. So <laughs> say yes. Um, okay. Another one for you, Anna. Also, is uh, I think it must be another uh, team member from Deacon has asked if they can use your posters. So uh, I'm not sure if you're happy to share sure. them as a resource. <laughs> Uh, I think that was it. Sure, uh, more than happy to. You can email me. There you go, Rosie. Um, I think that answers that question. Fantastic. Um, okay, so um, there's a question for Claire about your ugly jam that comes from um, Danielle. She'd like to know if there are any health and safety issues with your ugly jam. Uh, at the moment, we uh, seem to be fine. We make sure that um, we get the fruit before students put it in the bin. We have glass walls here so we can see directly out into the kitchen. And so when I see students going to throw it in the bin, I chase after them. Um, the fruit is then um, washed and cleaned on the outside. Uh, it's then sliced and juiced. So the outside um, is not used where possible. Um, if we want to use rind of a fruit, what we'll do is we'll find someone um, either in the university or around the local neighborhood who has excess fruit on their tree and we'll go and pick that. Uh, for the process, everything is thoroughly washed and thoroughly boiled as well. Um, and the jars are heated to boiling uh, heated to really hot in the oven as well. So because everything is boiled uh, very thoroughly, um, it is quite safe and we certainly haven't had any problems at all at the moment. Great, thank you for that. I'm also curious to know how many um, how many jars of jam you were able to produce from the first uh, batch that you made? Ah, good question, let me count. Uh, <laughs> uh, I can... Um... Uh, we got 20 jars of jam. Fantastic, awesome. Um... Okay, so Danielle said thank you for that. Um, so Darcy's also got another question for Claire. Uh, have you thought about getting a juicer for students to have juice instead of jam? Uh, we've certainly um, looked into that and we're trying to work out the best way of doing it. We do have the old fashioned hand orange juicer. Um, we find that at the moment the students are at a point in which they can't be bothered doing that, uh, which is unfortunate because we know that if we juice the oranges for them, they will then drink the orange juice. Uh, but for whatever reason at the moment, they aren't willing to go to the effort of slicing the orange in half and using the hand juicer. Um, but we'll explore options um, of whether or not we can use just a standard uh, electric juicer, whether or not that would make them change their behavior. Awesome. Um, cool. Okay. So I'll just keep going through the questions. Um, so, um, Elise has actually put her hand up to ask a question directly. So, uh, Elise, did you want to, I'm going to unmute you and see if this is going to work. Do you want to ask your question? Um, maybe instead of jam, can I suggest a, a dehydrator? 
for old fruit, it just you just chop them up, put them in that, and then let it go, and then pick them up the next day. If it's apples, that's probably I don't know, just another option, a little easier. That sounds like a really wonderful idea. We hadn't thought of that, but we'll definitely explore that. Thank you so much for the suggestion. Um, especially where you live, you could even do a solo one in. Um, but yeah, I do that with fruit. The dehydrators are about, you can get a cheap one, they're a bit harder to clean. They're about $40. I've totally used them all the time. I could show you some examples, but I don't, I don't know how to work this camera here or anything. <laughs> At least yeah, that would be awesome. Or even if you could email me, that would be incredible. Thank you. At least we might have to get you to present on our next uh, showcase webinar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I'm just going to mute you there so we don't get any feedback. Okay, so um, just checking through my questions now. So um, TJ asked another question about a, a list a shared list of these sorts of initiatives. So um, the AXE team is definitely looking to work out all the different ways that we could possibly share the fantastic work um, that teams are doing as part of Green Impact. So this webinar, uh, as I said, will hopefully become one of an ongoing series. So you've got this opportunity to ask questions in a live environment, but we, are also, we also do have a template for case studies that's available on the Green Impact website on our resources page that we'd really love to see teams. Um, if you think you're doing something fantastic, you can uh, pop it in that template and we'll share it uh, on our website and throughout the network. So uh, we'll be chasing them for, for sharing, obviously, but um, it would be really great if, if you're doing something in your Green Impact team, uh, you can pop it in that template and we will share it for you. Um, so hopefully as we go on further with the program, more and more of these amazing creative initiatives will come out of it. And uh, hopefully through ACTS, we can share that fantastic work. So um, I don't see any new questions popping up uh, through the question bar. I will just give it another minute or so. If you've got any burning questions that you'd like to ask, please do put them through in the chat. Uh, sorry, in the question bar, or um, I can unmute you if you'd like to ask the question again. Um, also, feel free to, if you found the session today useful, please do let us know. Um, if you'd like to see more of it, then uh, we would certainly be able to, to put them on for you on a regular basis. So, um, I, I won't keep stalling you all too much if there aren't any additional questions. So, um, I will wrap up the session today. And thank you so much to our presenters for giving their time today. Anna, Marisa, Claire, um, Hannah and Tess, um, thank you for sharing what you're doing with your Green Impact teams. It's been uh, amazing and motivating. And hopefully we'll be back not too, in the not too distant future with more fantastic work coming out of the Green Impact teams. So that's it. Uh, we'll wrap up. Uh, oh, hang on. I've got a couple of... Um, last minute questions that have come through. So um, does anybody have a resource that calculates waste based on printed pages or other office activities? I might um, I might flag that one test to go to a broader group if that's okay. Um, another question, TJ's asked how many people are on here now? So we've got, uh, we had up to 50 people uh, joining in the live webinar today. Um, uh, a few have dropped off now. So it's actually a really good turnout for a session like this because we do record it. We offer it um, available later on as a resource to listen to. So lots of people don't join in on the live session. They just uh, download it or uh, listen to it directly on YouTube, which we will make this session available also um, after today. So um, I think that wraps up all the questions. So I will sign off this time uh, properly. Uh, thank you again all for joining us today and um, yeah, please feel free to share this uh, webinar session around once we make it available online. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> thank you.